All right. Hey guys, what's up? Tom Fountainhead back here in my 30 day challenge of guitar lessons. So for 30 days, I'm posting one short guitar lesson every day for you guys, completely for free. And today starts tapping week. So I thought, okay, what can we do in terms of tapping? And what is the thing that people ask me about the most in terms of you know that technique? So I thought that I should really get into the mechanics of this little fella here. Right, nothing out of the ordinary here. It's just C and D in the left hand and A and B in the right hand. And the reason I'm showing you this is that people who have been trying to learn my recorded material, especially those who uh, uh, have been learning the across the solo, which is quite a lot of people, um, they often then ask me, how do I achieve this fluid and um, you know seamless transition between left and right hand in terms of sound and in terms of speed right because when you listen to the recording you can i hope you can't really tell the difference between notes in the left hand and notes on the right hand and that's really important to me because i really want it to be seamless and this little thing what i showed you right here that is that is all the secret, and I'll tell you what exactly it is that I'm doing. But first of all, let me uh, just give you a quick backstory where this is coming from. So I am mostly self-taught on electric guitar, but I had um, guitar lessons from a classical guitar teacher when I was a kid, like six, seven, eight years old. And one of the very first things I learned to do uh, and learned about the importance of it is to have always more than one finger on the fretboard. So for example, if I play, I will have two fingers on the fretboard, index and ring finger right away, and then pull off with the ring finger towards the index finger. And so the clarity and the articulation of the notes really doesn't just come from one finger pulling, making this pull off motion, but it comes from a combination of those two fingers. Because if I'm pulling down towards the floor with the ring finger, then simultaneously I'm pushing either down on, like straight down onto the fretboard or a tiny bit uh, towards the ceiling with my index finger. And the combination of these two forces, so you can imagine me pulling the string into two directions at once. And when I let go of that, you know, it's it gets pretty snappy. Right? And that is the trans that is the uh, technique behind it, to utilize the power and the, the force within more than one finger. And that is basically what I took and made part of my tapping technique. So more specifically in this little lick here. So C and D, and then I'm um, hammering on the A with my middle finger. And while I'm doing all this tapping motion that's about to come, I hope you can see that my palm, the palm of the right hand is always covering as many strings as possible. So if I'm going from a picking position into this, you can't really hear, if I intensify you can probably hear it, um, it's pretty inaudible, especially if it happens fa fast, but I'm always using this you know the the strings the length of the string as kind of a guiding guiding how do you say um guiding lane for my hand to push forward without ever leaving the strings and so i can just by the feel of how much string i'm covering i can find the right place to put my tapping on so i can switch between picking position and tapping position really quickly Right, by never really letting go of the strings of my palm. Right, so that's another little dirty secret. So once I'm here, I'm hammering on with the middle finger. 
can see that I have a pretty forceful hammer on, so I'm covering quite a bit of ground. You know? It's like uh, my fist can fit in between the space that I'm covering here. And so usually what I do is if I have to make this big, big jump from my picking position into a tapping thing, like I have to do in that first bar of the acrosis solo, so where I am in my picking position, And then in the space of one 16th note at, uh, I think, 220 <laughs> BPM, I have to find this note. And so I'm kind of like rah, throwing my hand over here. I'm never letting go of the strings, but I'm, you know, I'm going here, covering all this ground, and I'm already lifting my finger up. Bam! to have the most forceful, impactful hammer-on that I can. So now, let's go back to our little example. Hammer-on number, number one. Then, again, lifting up the ring finger for hammer-on number two. And you can see that I'm not moving my middle finger at this point. So we have both fingers on the fretboard. And what happens now, and still, you know, the palm is still blocking the strings so that we don't have any unwanted noise. And now what happens next is that my my ring finger is pulling off towards the floor or if you will towards the palm the, the palm of my hand. Right? And just like in the left hand example, I'm not using just the power of this one finger. I'm at the same time, pressing down even harder with my middle finger, either, either just onto the fretboard or slightly into the other direction. Just, just a hint of it. Just so that, again, we can have this, you know, pulling motion where we are basically putting a lot of pressure on the string so that when it snaps back, when we let go, of this finger that will have an even uh, an even louder and clearer sound of the note. And then I will be pulling this finger, the middle finger, towards the floor, basically using the same motion that I would for picking, right? Using gravity to our advantage. Yeah, and that's basically the entire secret. And you need pretty strong calluses to do that, but if you just uh, practice what I what I just showed you, uh, maybe for like a couple of minutes a day, then after a couple of days, I think you should you should be fine. But it's definitely a more forceful and more um, you know impactful tapping technique than I've seen a lot of people do. Like some people have this very gentle tapping technique, and this is not really what I what I do. Because I want the listener not to be able to tell if I'm playing with the left hand or the right hand. I just want them to focus on the notes that I'm playing. Right? So that's the idea behind it. And um, I'm not going to get into eight finger tapping so much right now. This is for later lessons this week. But uh, the, just basically, if I'm using eight finger tapping, the technique is the same. So let's say I'm playing this chromatic thing here. So again, I'm just adding fingers and all the ones I've already put on the fretboard, they are staying. So now I have four in a row. And then I will be pulling off each finger towards the floor or towards the palm of my hand. And every time I do that, the finger below that will put a little more pressure onto the fretboard and also like pushing it a little bit into the other direction so we can have the notes ringing out loud and clear. And then for the last one, um, same thing. I will just use this, you know, tapping, uh, this picking motion and pull off towards the floor. And that's it. Right, so 
that's it for today. I hope this uh, little insight into the technique was helpful. I don't think you need me to tell you, you know, how to do tapping uh, at all. You know, to the ba how to do tapping. Period. I think everybody knows that by now. But you know, this is one of the ways how to take your tapping technique to the next level and have more of a continuous sound between the hands. Right. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, like and subscribe as always. Ring the notification button. That's really important. If you really need taps for it for this one, I don't think you do. But if you do, I will be posting them on my social media, which is linked in the description box. So I'll be seeing you tomorrow when we take the same concept and um, applying it to a more complicated line and taking it to the next level. That's the plan. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.